Hi, this is Pony Pony Podcast, episode two, the Horse of the Year show special. So I went to the Horse of the Year show on Sunday with my homeboys and it was great fun. <clears throat> You're going to have to excuse me today a little bit. Some bastard has given me a cold. I hate colds because they hurt my sinuses. And you know why they hurt my sinuses? Because years ago, I got a bit of hay stuck up there. I I don't even know how or why or what, but it really hurt, like, so much. I went to the doctors, they took it out, and it was like the floodgates opened. It was unspeakably grim. But after that, I felt a lot better. Apart from every single time I get a cold now, my sinuses get really affected. So I sound a little bit like a duck, which is glorious. But never mind. We'll just have to put up with it and make the most of it. So today's episode is the first full length one. And that means that we're going to talk about the Horse of the Year show. Obviously, that will be our main feature. But I've also got a couple of little bits that I really, really wanted to do. So we've got Tack Room Corner, which is going to be great fun. I love Tack. Everybody loves Tack. It's the best. Then we've got the Horse Feed Geek section as well. So I had a, an email from Emmy this week asking about what she should feed her baby she's got a little fuzzy baby i love fuzzy babies so we're going to talk about that too now recently i've been ill not not like cold ill i mean i've been really poorly i've been i've, I've got this thing called ehlers danlos syndrome which is a super rare joint disease um it's not much fun at all and on top of it, it looks like I might have some kind of autoimmune problem as well. So I haven't been feeling very well. I haven't done a lot of riding recently. I did manage to sit on Elmo a couple of times in the last couple of weeks because he's a good boy. I'm not entirely convinced I want to get on Odie at the moment because he is very excite. I mean, so much running around the field. It's very, very cute. And he does love his mummy. I just... I think I'm too floppy to sit on that at the moment. Bless his heart. Well, we better we better start with the Horse of the Year show then, haven't we, really? We've been a few times. Uh, I say we, I mean Lauren, who is my best friend slash field partner, and Beth, who is my best friend slash personal photographer. No, I'm only joking. She does take pictures for me, and she is technically my sponsor, which makes me feel very, very grown up. But they're, they're both my best friends. That's the really, that's the important part here. My parents are awesome. They've bought me a pair of tickets for a, a few years now. And it's it's amazing because normally I wouldn't be able to afford to go and go and do something and see something like this. Um, so it's like my early Christmas present and I love it. So huge shout out to them. I always take Lauren with me and then it happens to be right around Beth's birthday. So we take Beth as well. She tends to get a, a ticket from her mum for her birthday and it all works out really gloriously well and we have a great time. Um, this year was no exception. We always have fun hanging out together. Um, we'll start off with the shopping, shall we? Because that's that's the first thing that we do when we get there. We we like to go around the halls and look at all the stuff and the things and the pretty stuff and touch it and and get the free stuff and it's great. This year, horse of the year show was much smaller. I mean, the shopping area was much smaller, notably smaller. It was only in one hall and usually it's in two. So it's literally like half the size, which meant that there was half as many stalls there. And we were missing a lot of the big good ones that, that we like to look at in previous years, which is a bit of a shame, really. Uh, it seems that a lot of the stall holders there didn't know that this was going to be the case either. They just booked their stalls. And when they got there, they discovered it was much much smaller and much like we did it's gonna be permanently smaller apparently so if anyone from horsey year show wants to kind of let us know why then that would be great the, the tickets cost the same amount by the way 
for half as much shopping. So make of that what you will. Um, but I did think it was worth bringing up. We still had a lot of fun, even though it was half as big. The first stall that we went to, we saw Agrobs. Agrobs are natural feeds from Germany and they are fantastic. They're really natural, they're organic, they're mostly grasses and things, they're not full of nasties. They're, they're a really good company, they're good guys. And the UK distributors, which is the company called Red Rufus, they're just really nice people. We always go and have a chat with them when we see them at these shows. They remembered us, which I thought was really nice. Maybe that means that we go and talk to them too much. I don't know, but it was really nice to see them. And, and it was an even nicer surprise when they remembered who we were. They gave Lauren some advice on Bob because he's getting old and he's got less teeth now because he's, he's been a cribber for years and years and he's worn his teeth down to the nubs. Uh, so she spoke to them a little bit about that. And I asked them about what I can feed Elmo to disguise his head shaking liquid. He does not like that stuff. It's obviously bitter. It does smell nasty when you take a good whiff of it. It it's amino acids and things, and they're just they're bitter. They they don't smell good. Unsurprisingly, this means that my fussy cob goes, yeah, no thanks, ma'am. Um, just leaves it, which is not the idea, really. Thank you very much, Elmo. So they gave me some rather generous samples of the Agrobs mash. The Agrobs mash is supposed to be absolutely fantastic for sorting out digestive issues. And it does smell amazing. I mean, it smells so nice. It's that kind of fresh cut herby grass smell. It's really yummy. So hopefully that, that will do the job. That will hide the taste of the liquids that he doesn't like so thanks very much to agrobs for giving us those to try i will get back to you as soon as we've experimented a bit with them kramer ah now i love kramer because they're kind of the the modern day better equivalent of robinson's i used to love buying stuff from robinson's and we'd get the catalog and we would have a look through and mark all the cool stuff that you wanted but then they were bought by sports direct and ever since they were bought by sports direct everything's gone really downhill the the quality of their stuff is just much lower and you know they they don't do so much cool stuff i remember years ago i got a really cool rug for my old warm blood it was black and it had silver stars all over it and it was the coolest thing ever and they don't do anything really like that anymore no funky prints or or anything which is disappointing so anyway kramer came to my attention earlier on in the year and I've had several orders from them now um, which I'm a little bit ashamed to say but but not really because I love buying things for my ponies and spoiling them. Um, I've bought all kinds of things from them. I've bought little bits of tack. I've bought their feeds. I've bought Oh, their treats. Their treats are something special. Uh, if you want to spoil your horse or you do clicker training like I do then then definitely getting on their horse treats because they went down an absolute storm now kramer's stall was only very very small they they weren't there to sell anything there was just like a little there's a box of the little horsely um little plushy toys and you had to guess how many horsleys were in the box and then you had to guess how many other people entered the competition so that was a bit of a weird and difficult competition. But the, but the girl on the Kramer stand was so nice. She went through all of the bags of... Uh, little, they had like little goodie bags and you could get them with treats. So she went all the way through the boxes to find us bags with the horse treats in, which was just so nice of her. Hoping that next year that Kramer will bring a whole stand full of all their goodies um, so that we can actually have a look at them in the flesh and touch and buy. I will definitely buy their stuff. I love their stuff. I can spend hours just pouring over their catalogue when I'm bored or when I'm not bored, when I'm just procrastinating. Yeah, I like a bit of window shopping. So Kramer were great. Uh, thumbs up to them as well. There was a bakery. Now, I've got a lot of food restrictions I'm, I'm allergic to a lot of stuff it's part of this eds the Ehlers danlos syndrome and um, i'm not allowed wheat or potatoes or dairy products or oh, just 
just so much stuff that I can't eat. I'm really allergic to almonds. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I was so happy when I saw this bakery. When it's gone, it's gone. That's like it's gone, like the little cakey things. They just do gluten-free stuff. And they had this vegan gooey brownies. And oh my God. They were so delicious, all gooey and delicious and soft in the middle with big chunks of chocolate. And they were just perfect. Because I don't know if you've ever eaten gluten-free cakes, but some of them are shit. Like, just no. You wouldn't feed that to your dog. So stop selling it to people that can't eat normal cakes. It's just mean, you bastards. Anyway, so big shout out for them for thinking of the people that can't eat normal food. It was so nice to see. I had all these huge gluten-free cheesecakes that looked amazing as well. Obviously, you can't have the, the cheesecake because it's dairy, but they did look amazing. Um, it was just really nice that they had all this gluten-free stuff there. So shout out to them as well. Now, what else did we? Let's have a look in the notebook. I'm very organized. I made, made a lot of notes. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, ah yeah there was a big escadron uh, stand oh, i love matchy matchy and i love escadron in particular we had a look at some of the stuff i so nearly bought the stripey baroque pad they um in the the platinum um 2017 collection they had this stripey pad it's kind of silver and navy and it's got these little um these little motifs all over it and, and it's just the coolest thing ever <clears throat> sorry excuse me i thought long and hard about what pad I was going to buy because I could, I could only really afford one which was a total bummer um, and I bought the Blackberry Micro Ornaments I was not disappointed with it thank you very much to Lily at Fur Feather Meds for facilitating this I also bought the matching ears and I think it's my new favourite pad ever I mean it just looks absolutely fantastic on Odie but anyway the the stripy pad was a, a close second and they had a couple and I was like oh should I shouldn't I and in the end I didn't um because I saw a Blackberry Platinum Edition grooming bag and I was like I am having that it it's just oh it's lovely and big and it's got like a hoopy rim thing in it so that it stays open while you're grooming and stuff it's got these pockets and it's just oh it's just so fancy and nice and lovely and pretty so I bought that and then thought ah uh, if I've got enough spending money left then I'll go back and I'll get the stripy pad but I didn't have enough spending money left because I bought I bought loads more little bits and bobs nearly 70 pounds for one pad or several little bits and bobs i'm not surprised that i kind of decided to buy more stuff rather than one big thing so if anybody is gonna sell me a stripey pad really super cheap you know you know where i am hit me up hit me up i hope you're out with it Otherwise, I think I'll just keep an eye out for a second hand when in a few months time when when people when, but what you find is when the new collections come out, everybody sells their other stuff that they're slightly less keen on to facilitate them buying the new matchy stuff. So, I mean, hopefully people have got bored of them a little bit by then. I'd, either way, I've put it on my hit list. I'll just have to get round to it at some point. What else did we see? We saw V-Bands. They are the high-vis people that are much better than the other high-vis people that we do not speak of. V-Bands, they're ever so nice. Beth bought one of their cool new waistcoats. It's got lots of zippy po pockets and, and reflective bits and, and stuff. It's really, it's tray cool. It's very good. Um, I didn't get anything this year, but I would have had, they've got like a, a breastplate that's got flashy LED lights on it. And I absolutely would have bought that if it wasn't red. If they had a black one there or like a plain silver one or something, I'd have had it, you know, before you could say boo. But they only had red. However, they are going to do some black ones in the future. So that will be something I'm looking to get all about the road safety. It does really, really help other road users. They can see you really clearly when you've got lights on. Um, and they've got reflective material and they're really smart so they're a brilliant idea i bought odie a hay grazer play have you seen these they're like hay bags um that, that look to me they look a bit like those one of those things that um you know a, a punch bag 
they look a bit like a punch bag and they're made out of bouncy castle material and I've got a purple one with pink webbing on it and it's got these little windows cut out where your horse can pull the hay through from and I effectively I bought it for Odie because he's oh, he's just he's such a thug and he gets bored and he's got a hay bag but he is he's nearly killed it now I mean like nearly completely killed it just because he beats it up so much he's like sticking his whole face in there and grabbing it and he, he likes to kick it with his front legs he's, he's just a bit of a knob really with stuff so I thought he might like the hay grazer it will just be something a bit tougher and just as interactive for him it's only for while he's tied up um, and I'm doing things like grooming and tacking up and stuff so it should last me for ages and ages and ages it's really well made it's super super tough the only problem is when I got home and I opened it, there isn't a rope or the clips in my one. So I sent them an email and I said, please could I have the rope or the clips? I did hear back straight away. They said they were going to put some in the post first class, but I haven't actually had them yet. And it was it was Monday when I emailed them and it's Friday now. So, I mean, I might drop them another email later and just be like, uh, have you sent them yet can I have them please because it would be really nice for Odie to be able to start playing with his hay bag I think he's gonna love it uh, I think that was 50 pounds marked down to 40 pounds uh, like a horse of the year show special so that was really cool I was really pleased with that I've got cats and Anybody who, who really knows me knows how much I love my cats, especially Totoro. He's my little black fuzzy hairball, my witch's familiar. He's my little best buddy in the whole world. I'm just looking at him now. He's on the floor, all curled up, all sleepy, kind of looking at me a little bit because I keep saying his name. He looks a little bit pissed off about that. He's very, very cute though. He gets really cold. I don't know why. He's just he's just a cold cat. He's quite puffy. He's got like a weird puffy soft coat. It doesn't seem that effective at, at keeping him warm. So he wears pajamas. Now I knitted him a pair of pajamas a few years ago and he wears those. So I thought it's time for him to have another pair of pajamas. So I went to A and J Boots and they had these cute little dog onesies. So I had to pick one up for Totoro because it's so cute it's little black and it's got little stars all over it little white stars all over it and it's got a purple collar i did put it on him and the the back legs don't fit cats they're clearly made for dogs so i'm gonna just snip the back legs off and then it will be perfect for him but he really liked it and he fitted it really well so it wasn't the smallest dog size that they had that was the next size up for anybody else that wants to buy pajamas for their cat because they're just as nuts as me he does like his pajamas he lets me put them on quite happily and he's and uh, now he's attacking his brother his brother is called pikachu you'd be nice to him Totoro. he wears his pajamas in bed keep him super warm and then when we get up in the morning I try and take his pajamas off him he usually just runs away because he doesn't want me to take his pajamas off so he'll go and hide like on top of the wardrobe or right under the middle of the bed where he knows I can't reach him so obviously he likes his pajamas there's nothing wrong with kitties wearing pajamas there is an there is a saying to go with that you know the cat's pajamas or well, Totoro loves his pajamas I got some of the fiber blocks from feed mark the feed mark ladies looked a little bit tired but they were really they were really nice and they helped me out a little bit i struggled a little bit at their still i felt a little bit bad um, because i had to take my walking stick with me as i have to for big days out now i can't manage just walking by myself anymore and um <laughs> i just couldn't i couldn't get the money out of my purse and i was holding some of my shopping bags and it was just a whole thing so thank you feed mark ladies for being patient and helpful the fiber blocks if you've never seen them they're like little bricks of well fiber so they've got like hay and straw and alfalfa and stuff in them they're compressed into a like a hard block of chaff so they're really good for keeping ponies out of trouble and um, they gnaw on them 
And if you know me, Zelmo, then you tend to have it in a bucket. Otherwise, you just stamp it into the ground out of frustration. But they are really good. They're a great idea. So if your horse likes that kind of thing, then go for it. I don't know if you've ever seen the other uh, the other brands that are available. Um, oh, God, what are they called? The Equilibrium ones. Vitamunch. They're called Vitamunch. Now, they're really expensive, but they are nice and, and herbally, the Vitamunch ones. They come in a, like a little, it's like a really tiny hay net that you're supposed to hang up. And Odie just, what he would do effectively is he would put the whole thing in his mouth and just chew it. So the little hay net didn't actually make any difference at all. And the little hay net also really isn't strong. I mean, it gave up the ghost almost immediately and just snapped and fell apart. So... I mean, try put it in a normal hay net, perhaps a little bit more durable than the tiny weeny mini ones. I don't know. I tend to just put them either on the floor or in a bucket and just give them to them because it, it just stops them being a pain in the backside. And then there's no risk of them eating bits of nylon rope either, is there? Agrobs are doing fibre blocks as well now. Um, and the Simple Systems ones are the other ones that are really good. So Agrobs and Simple, simple Systems, they... Both make really nice, healthy, natural feeds, grass-based, alfalfa-based, no nasties, no nothing like that. So you definitely want to be looking at something like, like those if you want a boredom buster. Uh, something else that we saw was a stall called Duck Soup. And I think their website is ducksoup.co. And they have these cool little neoprene treat pouches. They've got like a no spill top on them. So like a little, it's like a little coin slot it is. And you put your fingers in to get the treats out. But if you turn it upside down and shake it, the treats don't all fall out everywhere. So they thought they were a really, really cool idea. I didn't buy one because they were on the expensive side. And to be honest, for what I do, they're a little bit on the small side. I'd have liked to see a much, much larger one just because I tend to go straight from training one to training the other. Or when I go out hacking, sometimes I'll be out hacking for two to three hours. I need more than just a handful of treats with me. I've got to take quite a lot out to make sure that we've got plenty just in case while we're out so i didn't get one but i will be watching them if they decide to bring out a much bigger treat pouch then i'll be there i think that was about it really for for uh interesting stuff that we did while we were looking around the shopping but the evening performance which is like the main event if you've never been to the horse of the year show before the main event is in the genting arena so that's like the big bit right at the very end of the NEC. Obviously, it's got to be big enough to hold the show jumping ring. So they use it down there. I think they use it for like concert venues and stuff as well. But for whatever. Now, there were some logistical impacts on there only being one hall rather than two. So you've got hall one and you've got hall two. Hall 1 is the one that's nearest the Genting Arena. Hall 2 is the next one. It's on the other side from the Genting Arena. So Hall 2 was where the show was. But like all the trade stands and everything. And the Genting Arena was on the other side of Hall 1. That was a bad idea. I don't know who did what. That was a bad idea. You had to walk flipping miles to get to where your seat was. Um, and it was quite badly organised. They just had these like random people just yelling at you, you know. Uh, if you want this number or this number, stand here. And if not, keep walking down there. And then there was a big queue. And it just took forever to get in there. We missed the Caspian ponies, which was a shame because they're so little and they're so cute. And the Caspian Pony Society had obviously gone through a lot of trouble dressing them up in this traditional, like, Caspian-style outfits. And I, I was just, you know, bad organising meant that these poor people were putting on a performance but, but barely had an audience. So, Sorry, Caspian Pony Society. I'd have loved to have seen more of your Caspian ponies. You can blame the Horse of the Year show organisers for that. 
after that, then you have all the showing stuff. So you've got the the Horse of the Year show, Supreme Champion, and the Pony Champion, and the Shire Horse Champion. It's it's not really my cup of tea. To me, all the riding horses basically look the same, apart from the cobs. One of the cobs there, it just looked really out of place. I I honestly don't know that much about showing, but it it just didn't look like it belonged. You know what I mean? Um. It had like a, a bit of an old choppy action that was really highlighted by the fact that it was surrounded by other horses that had much better um, much better ways of going. So I don't, I don't know what that was about. That was a bit odd. Of course, we had the Prince Philip Cup. I love that. The little mounted games ponies flying around everywhere with excited children. They do all the impressive mounting while they're running along. Oh my God, I wish I could do that so much. I mean, it looks like great fun. It's quite nice to watch him because it always gives me great ideas about, uh, you know, things I can try with my ponies. So, you know, weaving poles and uh, just stuff like that. So that was great fun, watching them fly around everywhere. We also watched the Atkinson Action Horses. The display wasn't great. At least 50% of that I can do with my own horses and, and have done with my own horses in my own field. Okay, I understand that a lot of people don't do trick training and, and they don't do clicker training and things like that. Perhaps I spend more time working on the ground than the average horse rider. But still, I kind of expected more. It wasn't very well thought out at all. You know... A couple of a couple of nice bits where they were flying around doing the cool hanging off the side and stuff like that. But honestly, I was expecting much more from them. So that was a little bit of a shame. And uh, we, I'm sorry to say we, we got a bit of attitude off of them. And um, when my friend went up to the... Uh, they had like a booth in the shopping area. So... Not not so impressed there, but, you know, never mind. Perhaps they're a bit stressed out being at the show for a few days. I, I don't really know, but, you know, just a little bit disappointed, really. Uh, the music act they had this year were, were unusual. They had the Red Hot Chili Pipers. That is a covers band made up of bagpipes and marching drums and electric guitar. So a little bit odd, a really fun idea. I can't say that I think it was a really appropriate act to book for the Horse of the Year show. But, you know, people seemed to enjoy it. That was fine. Right until the end, until the finale. They they stayed in the arena and they did Old Lang Syne, which everybody likes to sing and join in with. But they put it on so flipping loud that... The ponies, they had the pony club ponies in the arena, all of them, from all six teams that were there. And the ponies were flipping out, spinning around everywhere and spooking, and they didn't do anything at all about it. They just had to turn the flipping volume down. So, you know, whoever your sound engineer is, sack them and get a little bit more considerate sound engineer next time because that was ridiculous watching those poor kids trying to struggle with their ponies that was and you know that was bad management or i i don't know how to put it anyway when, once we got all the 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 other stuff out of the way then we had the show jumping the the leading show jumper of the year uh, which is the grand prix class and that was great fun the jumps were terrifying they were enormous and beth and lauren decided that there's a jump there that that's got musical notes all over it and it could be treble clefts as the wings and they jokingly pitched that as my jump and boy did it cause a lot of the riders a lot of problems so that was quite amusing as we were going on watching it uh, definitely my fault for being a musician obviously and um, there was one rider in a hackamore so big up for the hackamores more bitless riding should be on display but i think a lot of places especially dressage they still don't allow it do they a lot of people just don't kind of think outside the box of normality but anyway it was nice to see that one bitless rider i was really really disappointed with john whittaker's rounds his horse 
looked so uncomfortable he had his tongue hanging out and he just he was just a mess they were really untidy rounds and i get that it's not about being super tidy it's about getting round in the time without knocking any of the poles down but the guy who won did a much much better job and obviously because he won and john risky didn't it meant that he got around in a quicker time and it was much tidier so it can be done it just uh, and you know everybody was everybody went absolutely mad for the whitakers and it just made me a little bit sad that these horses are really seen as machines and not seen as the living breathing creatures that they are but anyway overall we had a great day out and it was nice and fun we didn't get home till like one o'clock in the morning but that's also fine there aren't many uh, aren't many days in the year that I tend to go out all day and my, my bedtime is more like 10 o'clock at night usually um, I'm a very sleepy person uh, so a whole day out is, is a bit much it's taken me a couple of three days to recuperate from that so I'm glad that I booked a few days off of work right well let's move on to the horse feed geek section of the program shall we I got a message from Imi this week asking a question about feeding babies. So she's about to get, um, I think she actually, she just has got her, a five and a half month old cob cross fusion baby. Um, Her mum's sick, hence the early weaning. And she just wanted to make sure that she was going to be nutritionally supporting her correctly so the baby will be living out um with plenty of hay she'll be in an eight acre field and imi's got her lucy nuts and a general supplement but she's looking for really the the right supplements i suppose for a growing baby oh we do like some fuzzy babies and i have got some pictures i did ask imi for some pictures so i'm going to put those up on the podcast page as well What I recommended was a feed by Pure Feeds. You'll probably find that I recommend Pure Feeds quite a lot. It is specifically designed as a stud feed. So it's suitable for mares in foal, stallions, and it's suitable for growing young stock as well. The reason that I recommend Pure so often is because when I've run the details through Feed Excel, if you don't know what Feed Excel is, go and have a look because it's really good. It's a bit of software that you can input your horse's feed into. Um, and even, you know, you can, if you've had your grazing analysed, you can put your grazing in as well and it'll tell you where you're lacking or where you've got too much of stuff or where the ratios are incorrect. So it's really, really helpful, really, really useful for, for balancing a diet correctly. When you put pure feeds into that, they come out on top over all of the other balances that I've ever put through it. And that includes all the big brands like Top Spec and Bailey's and everything like that. Pure have the best balancer. So that's why I recommend this Pure Stud. All you need to add on top of that is some salt and some linseed. So the linseed just gives you plenty of essential fatty acids as well as it it like coats the lining of the stomach um, with a mucilage oh that's a lovely word isn't it as well as a little bit of linseed obviously you've got your actually salt as always 10 grams per 100 kilos of body weight so in a foal that's not going to be an awful lot but it's still important because especially with our british grazing you've got to balance out all that potassium and sodium is the way to do that Another option for you, Imi, would be Agrobs Futura, which is, again, designed for growing young babies. It's another natural feed like Pure Feeds. And they're both high in protein, um, which is very important because obviously baby is going to be growing. But more importantly, got the right amount um, of the vitamins and the minerals in there so you know, especially calcium uh, biotin is quite important I, you know it it covers everything you've covered all your bases then keeping starch and sugar low is particularly important in young stock because if you overload them on carbohydrates it can really affect their growing you don't want to feed a, a baby and get them to grow really really quickly 
because that's just asking for trouble you want our pony to grow nice and steadily you don't want there to be any knock-on effects on the skeletal system because they've grown too quickly nothing like that at all you tend to get that a lot with like race horses you know horses that have been well (laughs) fed an awful lot of carbohydrates and and encouraged to grow quickly Um, you can avoid all of those problems by feeding a good balanced diet so good luck with that Amy thanks very much for emailing in to us and I hope you let us know how your little baby's getting on I'm gonna pop those pictures up for you later in other feed news I saw a Spillers advert and they've got a new fiber feed out which is a lot like fast fiber but it's apple-y so it's got it says apple aroma but i'm guessing it's got to be apple flavoring or something somehow i don't know i'm going to ask them for a sample of it and see if that's going to be a good option for elmo to get him to eat his flipping head shaking supplements he is a nightmare like cops are just supposed to eat everything why he can't i don't know and he's like a dustbin he eats like he loves it when we worm him. What kind of horse likes it when they worm him? But he won't eat this flipping... Oh, I don't know. He's just a nightmare. Fucking cobs. Anyway, this Spiller's feed is called Speedy Mash Fiber. And it's higher in sugar and starch than fast fiber. And it comes in at about 10% combined sugar and starch. Fast fiber is about 7.5%. So that's really, both of them are kind of the upper limit of what I would feed in sugar and starch. But the Spillers one has got slightly higher protein levels. The recommended retail price is lower. It's nine forty nine. Fast fibers is about £11 now, I think. £11.50, something like that. They're really, really good feeds. Our horses really like them and they're they're a nice quick mash to make, you know, it's a 60 second soak thing. You can literally put the water in it goes and you can see it swelling up. Very palatable, obviously very high in fibre, but they are both based on nutritionally improved straw and cereal byproducts. So if your horse is cereal intolerant, they're not necessarily the best feeds. Now, they are cereal byproducts, which is not the same as feeding whole cereals. They are quite safe to feed. It's just, you know, if your horse does have an, a proper intolerance or an allergy, then you've got to check the ingredients very carefully. So there's oat feed and there's wheat feed in them. Nutritionally improved straw. Uh, they're like little pellets Uh, you quite often find them in like complete chaffs and stuff like that i don't personally find any problems at all but some people don't like the way that nutritionally improved straw is processed again that's something that you can look into for yourself and obviously make up your own mind over um doesn't bother me never had a problem with feeding anything with nutritionally improved straw in it's a good source of fiber you know i put straw in the hay nets to keep the fatties on the slimmer side so for me fine not a problem at all but it's just a reminder really to to really look at um look at your feed bags properly and make an informed decision so let's move on to tech room corner oh Anybody else like tack rooms? The smell. When you walk into the tack room, you get that kind of lovely sweaty horse slash leathery, nice horsey smell. I don't really know how to describe it, but tack rooms have a very particular aroma, don't they? Anyway, I've got a big thing for tack. I've got so much tack. I've actually got a wardrobe that's supposed to keep all of my horsey things in at home so we don't really have that much storage at the field but it it's overflowing and exploding basically <laughs> because i've got so many bits and bobs different bridles and oh, so many saddle pads i really love matchy so i've got i like half a ton of saddle pads over each boots a million brow bands all these you know little bits and bobs and they they do add up and they do take over a little bit but anyway I bought some more stuff this week, like you do. Big shout out to Claire, who has uh, once again facilitated my matchy desires. And she sold me the neon splash pads. A few years ago, there was a really good Escadron new generation 
collection and it had all my favorite pads in so the graffiti pad i've got a graffiti pads and i love that and this is the neon splash so it's um like a dark background with a huge neon pink paint splash on it and it's so cool it's gonna look amazing on od and i know this because claire has a horse called dooley who looks so much like od it's uncanny so i've already seen pictures of it on dooley and it looks mega on him so he's gonna look mega on od as well can't wait to try that out properly i think it'll look quite good on elmo as well actually Elmo doesn't always do very well with like really loud pads because he's quite a loud colour himself, you know, being black and white. But I've seen the splash pad on coloured cobs and, and it does look quite smart. So, you know, perhaps we'll try that as well. Other things I've bought this week, uh, I got a Gin Hackamore. So that was from one of the Matchy Girls. Um, gin makes stirrups. Everybody's mad on these gin stirrups um i never i don't really get what the deal is with them but i haven't ridden with normal people's stirrups for about five years now maybe longer i have a special pair of stirrups called kval stirrups which is k apostrophe v a l l if you want to have a google and have a look at them they've got a a regular normal strap but they've also got a back strap and they are a whole foot plate so your whole foot is supported and that's because as part of the eds my joints sublux and dislocate so by having my whole foot supported it stops that from happening while i'm riding it means i can do the little things like rising trot and you know just standing up to get over some rough ground and stuff like that it's so much easier now that i've got these caval stirrups but anyway that, that gin make these stirrups that everybody really loves they also make spurs which i don't use spurs so no spurs thank you they make hackamores it's really really lightweight they're made of aluminium and they've got like a iodized coating on them the ones that i've bought are silver and they're really smart they, they weigh next to nothing and they're really smart the shank on them is quite long but they do a short shank one as well and it came with the gin padding which is nice and wide and it is like padded properly as well so it is nice and soft um, and it, it i bought it for elmo because he's a head shaker um he he's got quite a sensitive head slash face um, and i don't want to upset him too much but i'd rather keep him bitless i'd rather all my horses were bitless and this seems like a good compromise i've sat on him a couple of times and used it very briefly and he seemed quite happy in it both times the second time i must admit he was really grumpy because i was actually um i was experimenting with some other bits of tech at the same time so i didn't get like a a good true idea of what he's going to be like but i rather suspect i take him out hacking that this gin hack more is going to be much much better the other thing that I really like about this gin hackamore is that it's got holes in the plate specifically for a second set of reins. So you can ride with a curb rein and you can ride with a side pull rein, um, which is really, really, you know, what I would like to do eventually is have both of my horses in a side pull, which is just a simple plain caverson with rings on the end and this will really well this should really help me get to that point so thank you very much katie for selling me that and it was a really good price as well so you're a super wonderful lady thank you uh, la, 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 la. now the tack experiment that i was mentioning have you ever heard of a total contact saddle some of you probably have they have been around for a while, as I understand. Uh, but some of you might not have heard of them at all. So what they are effectively is that they're, they're a surcingle. They're uh, like a roller with stirrup bars and no rings everywhere. So they're just extremely simple. And you're supposed to use them with gel pads and half pads and like a poly pad is what they suggest. Um so 
you're supposed to basically supply the padding yourself and you use this basic roller with very low set stirrup uh, bars and that's supposed to be <clears throat> the pressure distribution on them has always been quite questionable as far as I'm concerned they have had them pressure tested presumably with a Port Lewis pressure pad but they won't publish those details they say it's because it was an experiment carried out by um, the Master Saddler Society but whatever it is it, it doesn't cost an awful lot to have a Port Lewis pressure pad test done and I kind of don't understand why they don't just do it themselves and then publish the images because there is no spinal relief so all of the spinal relief comes from your padding and nothing to do with the actual total contact saddle itself I can't ride bareback I can barely ride without stirrups because I don't really have a sense of proprioception that's the the sense that allows you to know where your limbs are without looking at them. I don't really have that. So for me, being as wobbly as I am, when you take my stirrups away or my saddle away, I become extremely unbalanced. And normally I just fall out the side door. I have started being able to ride a little bit without stirrups, only in the ghost saddle. So really since I got the ghost saddle, tends to be on Elmo because OD trips and spooks and all kinds but Elmo doesn't really I just slip my feet out of the stirrups and bimble along a little bit um, and it's difficult you know a lot of people I suspect find riding bareback a little bit difficult but honestly I do find it very difficult oh a bird just flew into my window I scared the crap out of Totoro poor Totoro oh dear Anywho, so I would love to be able to ride bareback. I think, you know, I can remember doing it when I was a lot younger and it was great fun then. But as I've got older, I've got sicker and now I just can't manage it. I just can't do it by myself. I could probably manage if I had someone walking along next to me to help and, and correct me, then that would probably be fine. But then it it's not really... You still haven't got the freedom that, that you get when you ride bareback, have you? So anyway, this Total Contact saddle I thought would be the closest thing that I'll ever get to riding bareback. The jury is very much still out for me on the whole spinal pressure thing. But because I ride treeless anyway, I do have plenty of pads that allow you know for freeing up the spinal area so they have like channels and they have padding and things like that on them to help with that i've got a roller with rings in about the right place for the stirrup so i thought i'll have a little go with that and i'll just see how i feel when i get on can i cope can i not cope you know how how is it and then if it's something that i can just about manage then maybe i'll save up a little bit and i'll get one of these total contact saddles and try riding it proper probably not out hacking and things probably just in the field for schooling but i would like to improve my seat and it's very difficult to find ways to do that when you are a disabled rider so this seems ideal save for the pressure issue uh, anyway i got on elmo and it oh my god you should have seen me trying to get on there's nothing to hold on to obviously um and i just i just didn't realize how much i relied on my hands when i mount my ponies so i felt like a bit of a tit doing that but never mind <laughs> um you live and learn don't you i did manage to get on in the end it was horribly uncomfortable and now that's probably my fault really because i used a roller and that's got lumpy bits you know all the rings and that on it and then obviously my stirrups, I don't, I think it'd probably be better if you use like dressage webbers for your stirrups, but I didn't have any basically. And, and I ride with these Caval stirrups. They've got two straps on. So I had these like two buckles cutting into my thigh and he just, oh, Elmo was so pissed off. He really didn't want to do anything anyway. 
And he just, uh, he was like, no, don't want to. Don't want to go out. And I was like, just walk up to the gate and back and then I'll get off you. And he was like, no, don't want to. So I resorted to bribery. I was like, walk a few steps and I will give you a biscuit. Um, So it didn't really give me a very good idea at all because obviously Elmo, he was either having a bad day, which is fine. We all have bad days. Or he just found it really horribly uncomfortable. I know I found it quite uncomfortable. Um, but it didn't. I don't think it really helped make my mind up at all about this total contact saddle. I still think if I was going to try one, I'd need to have one on trial properly. Um, a real one rather than just a, a lunch roller. Just so that I know that I've done it properly, basically. I think at the end of the day, I'm much, much happier in my ghost trailer saddle. It's really supportive and you can feel the horses back working through it quite well. It's got this big thigh block on it to stop my legs flailing about everywhere. It's got a nice deep pommel and cantle. It's got like a pommel arch at the front of it. So if I'm having a real wobble, I've got something to grab onto there. It's just a really well made, really th well thought out saddle. And I love it. And it's the best thing ever. I think you'd have a, a real job weaning me onto something other than that for regular riding. I will be getting a second ghost saddle at some point. I've only got the one because it, it fits both of my cobs basically there's no point buying two saddles unless you know i've got a bunch of spare money really is there but it's only really me that that rides them so i have this one ghost forenzi and i use that on both of them and i'm quite happy with that but you know maybe one day i'll try a total contact saddle properly and it would hopefully it will improve my seat improve my riding which is something i'm always trying to do anyway Right, okay, that about brings us to the end, I suppose. Thank you very much for putting up with my uh, horrible, head coldy, bumbly, horrible, snotty voice. Hoping next week I should be much better and back to my normal self. If I'm not, I'm going to kill whoever it was that gave me these germs. So, you've been warned, whoever you are. I don't know who it is, but I will find you. And I will hurt you. Don't forget, you can write to me at podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, at sparkle-pony.co.uk. So that's the email. We've also got Facebook, which is Pony Pony Podcast. That's our page. And Naturally Matchy, that's our group. So please check them out. I'd love to hear from you. So keep writing in with your questions, your stories, anything you like, really. Just send us an email, send us a message, have a chat on the group. And I really look forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much for listening. See you next week. Bye.